Are pension funds safe? That is the question that a lot of people are asking, particularly because the Bank of England bond buying program ended this past Friday. In this video, we're gonna talk about what the role of a pension provider is, how they actually invest money, why they would use gilts, because gilts are the main cause of concern here. And I'm gonna try and keep it as high level as possible, but I will link to more technical videos if you want to get into the nuances of how this actually works with derivatives and so on and so forth. There's gonna be a lot to cover, so let's get started. Now, the first thing to probably acknowledge is the size of the pension market here in the UK. It's about £2.5 trillion in value. A large proportion of that is in something called defined benefit pensions, where you have a guaranteed income for life. Now, it's really important to understand the role of a pension fund as well. I mean, fundamentally, their job is to essentially provide income to their investors who, who basically are in the pension fund. That is pretty much their role. And it doesn't matter on what journey of life or what phase of life you are, if you're paying into a pension, if you're 10, 15 years from retirement, yes, it's going to be invested for, for growth purposes, but the end goal is going to be income, generating an income for you. Later on in this video, we will talk about some things that maybe you should consider doing based on where you are on that retirement journey, but that's the general breakdown of the role of a pension fund. Now, when you invest and you talk about investing as a pension fund, well, now we start getting into the conversation of asset allocation and asset classes, because you would think that investing money into the market and using the growth that you get from the market should then provide you the income that you that you need, but that it's not as simple as that. And so there are lots of considerations that go into how money is invested, where money is invested, and in what proportions those that money is invested in order to give the best outcome in terms of income, but also manage the risk side of what they're also doing as well. And for this, I'm going to share my screen. I've got uh, my little digital notepad right here. And we're going to start talking about the different types of asset classes that we essentially have available for anybody to invest in. And now a pension obviously is an investment. So this will not just account for pension funds, this will apply to all kinds of investments. So generally speaking, you have uh, equities as an asset class, you have bonds, you have property, you have cash, you could have commodities. So commodities might be things like oil, um, gold, that kind of stuff, right? This will be commercial property, then cash is cash, bonds, then equities. Now, obviously, if you want to look at this from a risk point of view, your equities are high risk because you have the potential um, volatility within the markets. Well, that essentially means you're going to see the price of that investment go up and go down. That's not necessarily good when you're trying to generate an income, a known income for that matter, for your customers. And so what you try to do is you try to approach the, the investment ethos with, okay, we know that we need equities here, but how do we actually minimize the risk that we're taking so that we can continue to generate the income required for our customers? This is high risk. The next one that you have here is bonds. Now, this is low risk. Now, the reason why these are low risk is because most of the time with a bond, you kind of have a coupon or a return that is kind of already known from the outset. Now, there are two types of bonds. There are corporate bonds. There are government bonds. Now, government bonds are the cause of concern, the point of contention that has led us to this video and led to all of this, I guess, uncertainty around what's going to happen with pension funds and whether they are safe or not. So let's focus on corporate bonds, uh, sorry, government bonds. Now, government bonds are also called gilts. Now, this is a government IOU. Now, the reason why most people and most pension funds will favor a gilt over corporate bonds, which is money that is going to companies, to businesses, because businesses can fail. Businesses have failed. However, when you're lending money to a government like the UK government, the UK government has never defaulted on any of its debts in history. So when you think about the fact that this pension fund needs to generate income for its for its customers, yes, we've got equities which are high risk and money might be spread across 
commercial property as well. Let's get this one here. Might be spread here. They might have a little allocation to, to cash. They might be investing a little bit of gold and some other commodities. But most of the time, they're looking at these two categories as really the core driver or the core holding of their investments in most cases, right? And now, when we focus here and we compare these two, well, actually, you would consider government guilt as a primary source of your income because it's low risk. Remember, this is all about risk management. They have to generate an income. So it's all about how can they do that in the safest way possible. Now, this leads us on to the question of why are pension funds in the foray right now in terms of being at risk? Now, we have to understand what the risk to a pension fund is. So you've got the risk of inflation because that's the cost of of things going up around you, goods and services going up around you. And if you require uh, an income, really you want to be able to invest in a pension fund that is going to be able to at least match inflation. The goal is to beat it, but at least match inflation. So inflation is a really, really big uh, problem for, for pension funds. You've also got interest rates as well, because as interest rates go up, you might see pressure on the stock market. And now what have we been dealing with this year? We've been dealing with inflation and interest rates specifically. So understanding what the risks are to a pension fund then dictates, right, how are we going to go about investing these things? Now, what has happened and why is there so much conversation of pension funds being at risk? Now, I will actually share with you this article. It's going to be in the links down below. You can go and read this, but it explains it beautifully. So the Chancellor's decision last month to announce a £43 billion worth of tax cuts without explaining how they would, how they would be paid for damage investor confidence in the ability of the UK government to repay its debts. These are guilt, right? So we've already spoken about guilt. And like I've said, the UK government has never defaulted on guilt. But the announcement to uh, announce £43 billion worth of tax cuts without it being properly costed by the Office of Budget Responsibility meant that, you know, the guys in the market, the market makers are like, oh, hang on a second, we're a bit worried about here. When you look at that equation and the fact that they were given tax cuts as well. Guilt yields, the interest paid on money loaned to the government rose significantly. OK, so think about this. Right. So if there's less, if you know that you're going to get your money back from someone, you're going to have a low yield that you're going to pay because the risk is relatively low. When confidence is is, is broken or confidence is, I guess, a question, you're, you're going to ask for more, which means that the yields have increased significantly. This also impacted pension funds heavily invested in this type of debt. So guilt and pension funds are one of the biggest purchases of UK government debt because the UK government has had a great uh, track record of never defaulting on any debts throughout its history. And they know that it's low risk and can be counted upon to generate an income, provide that income for their customers, right? So protect uh, to protect them from rising inflation interest rates, pension managers put in place investment strategies known as hedging. Now, it's really, really important to understand what hedging essentially means. So hedging is essentially protecting oneself against loss on a bet or investment by making balancing or compensating transactions. So that's the that's the definition of hedging. So effectively, what they're saying is, right, if we know that there's a risk that this bond may not pay out, this guilt might not pay out, what we're going to do is we're going to take an opposite position to offset that risk. Now, what have they done? So they've done this through liability driven investment funds. OK, now we get into what li liability um driven investment funds essentially are, because this is the bit where people have got a little bit, I guess, worried about the legitimacy of what's going on under the table. It is also worthwhile um, noting at this point in time that, you know, the, the pension industry is highly regulated. So a lot of these pension funds have got to number one, always justify how they're investing their money and the risk that they're basically taking as well. They can't just go and invest off gone ho because people's life savings are in this. And many people will be skeptical about that statement, but I know that because I've worked in pensions myself. And, you know, you don't have to take my word for it, but believe me, it's highly regulated. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to 100% protect people. That's not what I'm saying. But these pension funds are highly regulated and they have to justify the approaches of what they're actually doing. Now, what are LDIs? So some pension schemes have to make sure that their assets, 
such as stocks and bonds, can generate enough cash to meet liabilities, the monthly payouts guaranteed for pensioners, their income, right? So again, they're investing knowing that they need to generate X amount of income every single month. So basically, they they try to do as what do as much as they can to ensure that they can meet their liabilities, i.e. the pension income that is required. Now, liability-driven investment funds are products sold by investment firms that help pension schemes match assets and liabilities, so there is no risk of not having enough to pay pensioners. So again, this is a this is a hedge, right? So if they know, right, the risk to providing this income is going to be this, they take the opposite position to try and hedge that position. Pension funds have to post cash as collateral against their LDI der derivatives in case they unexpectedly uh, rose in value. The amount of cash needed rises and falls in line with the values of the underlying asset. Now, that last sentence there is probably where people have got a little bit irate in terms of questioning whether the pension funds are doing something that is a little bit underhand, because it does sound quite, um, I guess, complicated and underhanded and maybe unexpected from a pension fund. So it says here, the amount of cash needed rises and falls in line with the values of the underlying assets. And essentially, because they're using derivatives, if they get margin called for any particular reason, because yields have risen quite significantly, they have to call on cash. Essentially, they get into a position where they have to then sell those assets, right? They have to sell those gilts. Now, if you have a ton of a product or an item going into the markets and there aren't that many buyers, what happens to the value of those things? The value of those things fall significantly. And so it feels like a vicious cycle. Now, the reason why the Bank of England stepped in is to give confidence to the guilt markets, essentially, and uphold that guilt market. Now, I think the real question that people are going to be asking here is, is this underhanded? Is this? Is there anything wrong in the pension funds doing this? Now, each to their own opinion, but having worked in the industry, I would say no, there isn't. Because essentially what they're trying to do, they're doing the best that they essentially can to meet the liabilities and provide the income that they, they have to provide to their customers. Now, if the mini budget hadn't come along, this wouldn't have been an issue at all. So this is something that I guess is self-inflicted and is only a topic of, of conversation because of the occurrence of the last three and a half, almost four weeks. But this would have been used for a number of years now because of the way the markets essentially are operating at the moment and the fact that this is just something that isn't necessarily uncommon practice. This, these are viable, tested investment strategies. This isn't like the subprime, you know, uh, lending subprime mortgage market from back in 2007, 2008, where they were looking at credit people, people's credit scores and didn't care that they didn't have any income or, or anything like that. This is not the same thing. It's very, very different um, from that situation. I don't think that people should be necessarily worried. Now, this will impact people if you're in a defined benefit pension. So I spoke about this a little bit earlier on. A defined benefit pension is essentially you have a guaranteed income for life. Now, a lot of baby boomers are in defined benefit pensions. If you are watching this channel and you're in your 20s or your 30s, even probably even your 40s, you probably won't have a defined benefit pension. There is a, an acute impact on those people with defined benefit pensions. Um, if you're in a defined contribution, maybe there is a little bit of cause for concern, but this is where I want to talk about maybe three scenarios where, okay, do you need to take action? So the first scenario is if you're years from your retirement, right? So let's say you're like me, you're 20 years, 30 years out, 40 years out from retirement. Should you be worried? The answer is no. You shouldn't be worried at all because you'll be invested for growth. And yes, bonds are going to form part of your, of your portfolio, but the point is, you won't need to access your cash for 20, 30, 40 odd years. So you don't really have to worry. Now, what, ha what happens if you're close to retirement? When I say close to re retirement, you're like, you know, one, two, three years from retirement, maybe even five years from retirement. Maybe you want to go and have a look at how much of your pension is actually invested in bonds right now. And the reason for that is because if you are, getting closer to your retirement date, there may be a strategy in place where you're coming out of equities, going into bonds, and most of your money might be in bonds the closer you get to your retirement date. And if that is the case, you probably want to speak to a professional, maybe a financial advisor or a pensions expert to see what 
impact this might have on you. The, the last is if you're actually in retirement. If you're in receipt of income right now, then yes, you may be really, really worried about this. Again, I would recommend that you go and speak to a pension expert or a financial advisor. Hopefully they would have done you know cash flow forecasting for you to really map out your income over a number of years with a number of scenarios put into the equation as well. So you know that even if the market were to fall 20, 30%, you're still gonna be okay or what the contingency would be in those instances. So speak to professionals if you are worried. If you're years and years and years away from retirement, you don't have to worry at all. Now, fundamentally, fundamentally, the question is, you know, are is there a risk that pension funds are going to collapse? I will confidently say no, but I am a half glass is full empty type guy, right? I'm not a pessimistic type of guy. I have confidence in the industry because I've worked in it. That doesn't mean that they they don't do some underhanded shady stuff sometimes. Yes, they do. That does happen. But I think for pension specifically, you're going to be safe. You will be safe. And ultimately, you need to look at it this way. You know, 2.5 trillion pounds in pensions here in the UK. A large portion of that is in defined benefits. The government is not going to allow pension funds to fail. Now, that leads to a different conversation altogether around underhanded taxpayer picking up the bill. But I think it should give you some confidence. You know, the government is not going to let pension funds fail. Is this an underhanded tactic, a hundred underhanded strategy that they're using? I don't think so. I really, really don't. If anything, I think it's it's in line with investment theory. It's in line with the investment strategy. And as long as they've been they've been diligent in um, their execution of it, which I'm sure that they will, because I know how much they, they get checked over and, and looked at, it should be fine. But that's me with five years in pension specifically and 15 years in the industry saying this. You make up your own minds on, on what you believe. Um, ultimately, if a pension fund were to go bust, you've still got your fund protected under, under the uh, pension protection. So you should be fine. But I'd love to know what you think in this video. Are you worried about this kind of stuff? Do you kind of understand this? I will link into um, other videos that will explain it in more depth if you really want to get into the technical detail. But I hope that you found that useful. I know that we covered a lot. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing and smash that like button. I'll catch you later on in the week.